Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Stephen's. It's so wonderful to have you all with us here this morning. Today is a very special day because we're welcoming uh, two new members and one reinitiated member. I don't know all the words. <laughs> Into the Daughter to the King chapter, which is a nationwide Episcopal movement um, for women. And so we're very excited to celebrate our chapter of the Daughters of the King and to welcome these new members. If you or yourself are new here or visiting us for the first time, I just want to say an extra special welcome to you. Um, we have cake and, uh, and all sorts of wonderful um, treats from the Daughters of the King after service right behind us. So please join us for that. Um, we'd love to get to know you better. And we're so glad you're here. And all are welcome here. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
just kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. you. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts. For as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Our first reading is from Deuteronomy. Moses said, see, I have set before you today, life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways and observing his commandments, decrees and ordinances, Then you shall live and become numerous, and the Lord your God will bless you in that land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away, and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him and holding fast to him. For that means life to you and length of days so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. The word of the Lord. Our psalm today is Psalm 1. Please respond by the half verse. 
Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked. Nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. <clears throat> they are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves do not wither. Everything, Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Before the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes. Nor the sinner in the counsel of righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. But the way of love. The second reading is from Philemon. Paul, a prisoner of Christ, Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our dear friend and co-worker, to Aphia, our sister, to Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house, grace to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. When I remember you in my prayers, I always thank my God because I hear of your love for all the saints and your faith toward Jesus Christ. I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective when you perceive all the good that we may do for Christ. I have indeed received much joy and encouragement from your love because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you, my brother. For this reason, I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do your duty, yet I would rather appeal to you on the basis of love. And I, Paul, do this as an old man, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. I am appealing to you for my child, Onimisus, whose father I have become during my imprisonment. Formerly, he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful to both you and to me. I am sending him, that is my own heart, back to you. I wanted to keep him here with me so that he might be of service to me in your place during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I prefer to do nothing without your consent in order that your good deed might be voluntary and not something forced. Perhaps this is the reason he was separated from you for a while, so that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother, especially to me, how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, am writing you and am writing to you with my own hand. I will repay it. I say nothing about your owing me, even your own self. Yes, brother, let me have this benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confident of your obedience, I am writing to you, knowing that you will do more than even I say. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself, cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower? does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it. Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to wage war against another king, will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000? If he cannot then... While the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can become my disciples if you do, do not give up all your possessions. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. You know, maybe Episcopalians would be a little more into evangelism if we had like better material to work with, right? I mean, can you imagine knocking on a stranger's door and being like, hello, would you like to give up your family and your very life and all of your possessions so you can follow Jesus? Uh, no, thank you. Have a nice day, right? I mean, come on, Jesus. We need a little bit better material to work with here. I used to joke in my last congregation that I went uh, on more prison visits than I did hospital visits. That's not really true. But I have to say, I haven't been to the prison once in this congregation, and that is not an invitation. <laughs> but one of the women I used to visit in prison a lot, uh, she was about my age, just a really funny, witty, wonderful woman. I really liked her when she wasn't on drugs. You know, addiction is such a brutal cycle. When I think about her life, I just have these sort of flashes and I don't even really remember what order all the things came in. I remember when we had the baby shower at the church for her and she was so happy and joyful and full of life expecting the birth of her child. And I remember when she was homeless and nobody, not even her little baby daughter knew where she was. Sometimes when I was in the park where there's groups of homeless people, I would think maybe I saw her, you know? But, but what would I even do? What would I even say? When I was visiting her in prison, I remember she told me how horrible that experience was. Not that any of us were under the impression that it's a wonderful opportunity, but I, you think of people who are unhoused as needing shelter from the elements, of course, right? That's, that's part of how it, how it works. But I had no idea that you needed to be protected from other human beings, particularly in her case, some of the men who took from her whatever they wanted. And I remember when she was out of prison and she was clean and sober and she was working at this job that she hated <laughs> and she had a toddler. Any of you ever had a toddler? And this toddler, in addition to the tantrums and lack of communication that generally comes with being two or three years old, also was struggling with all the issues that come with having a mother who'd been in and out of prison and in and out of rehab. And it was not easy. She was a single mother. And I just thought, what chance does she have to choose between this life 
where she has a job she doesn't like, a kid that's difficult to deal with, she's trying to do all this by herself, or going back to using drugs. I kind of feel like I know what choice I'd make. And I don't say that to be flippant about the reality of what people face when they're struggling with addiction or what, what any of us face in, in the reality of life that is difficult. I say it because when Moses says, choose life that you may live, he makes it sound a lot easier than it is. I know, I know that God tried to give us a lot of rules, a lot of prophets, a lot of teachers, right? God was really trying to help us understand what choosing life meant. But life is very complicated. How are you really supposed to know what the right choice is? What is life, right? Is it enjoying yourself all the time? Is it working very hard? Is it just existing somehow, being able to breathe every morning when you wake up? Is that, is that life? I think that if the world had two doors, you know, this one says life and this one says not life, we all go through life, right? That's easy. But I look at the world around us and I think that's not what's happening. We're making all kinds of choices. And part of that is because we don't always know how to make the choice that is right. Today we have our thrice annual, is that what you call something when it happens every three years? Our thrice annual reading of the letter to Philemon. Congratulations, you just read an entire book of the Bible. Well, frankly, Tom read it and you listened. You better have been listening too, because I'm, no, I'm not going to quiz you on it. But this letter that uh, Dick talks about the relationship between Philemon and Onesimus, and I'm just saying their names, it's all Greek to me, you understand, I don't. Forgive me if I'm mispronouncing your names. It never, I love that. Okay, um, so there has been some debate about the relationship between these two men, right? So some people um, argue that Onesimus really was a, a slave. And that this letter was um, something that abolitionists often use to say that the Bible says we should not have slavery. We should dismantle that whole system. Other people said, no, they had a relationship like being slaves because they were brothers or they were friends and they'd had some kind of falling out and Philemon really felt like he owed him something. Maybe he literally did owe him something. And as interesting as that is and how much I wonder, like what's the backstory that leads to this moment the, the, the letter is the same, no matter what the backstory is. It's clear they've had some kind of difficult falling out. Their relationship is severed. And Paul says, fix it, right? Fix it not because that's the right good Christian thing to do, although it is. Fix it because of the love of God in Christ Jesus. A love that even now we all share as a part of our faith. Yeah, also no thanks, right? <laughs> uh, nobody wants to be uh, separated from their family or from their life or all their possessions. And nobody really wants reconciliation. I mean, not really. We'd like the end result of it, but the hard work of doing it, no thank you. I mean, how do you forgive someone who you feel like owes you so much? They're like a, like a slave to you. Or how do you forgive someone who treats you like a slave rather than a sibling? How do you forgive someone who takes from you at one of the lowest points in your life? How do you forgive your mother if she chooses or seemingly chooses drugs over caring for you? Forgiveness is not easy. Jesus said, whoever does not pick up their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. And that's our problem, isn't it, right? If we were, if we were peddling new life, you know, if we were practicing resurrection, that we can sell, right? Everybody wants new life. But the problem is, often, maybe even always, you can't get to new life, to resurrection, without death. There's really only one way to overcome addiction, and that's primarily through the grace of God, but it's also through making hard, painful choices. There's only one way to mend the broken relationships of our world, all the grief and anger and pain that so many of us carry, and that's reconciliation, forgiveness, 
letting go of things, even though the people don't deserve that, and doing so is going to change everything about you. There's only one way to make the kingdom of God real on this earth, and that is by letting go of any relationship or possession that is keeping you from living the life that is a life, from living life at its fullest. Jesus told us, or came to tell us, that life comes after death. And as much as we know from our life experience why people don't always make that choice, right? Anybody who's ever changed their life, whether it's starting a new relationship or a new job or overcoming addiction or forgiving someone, you know how hard it is that life is not easy. But you also know from our life experience, we know from our life experience that life is also beautiful, right? Tomorrow we'll celebrate all the people who labor to give us life. Today, we celebrate some of the women who labor through their prayer and through their outreach and their service and their evangelism to show our faith to this church and to the world. And they're just a few of the women and men who do that. We know that even though toddlers throw tantrums, they also show us a glimpse of, of God of life, of beauty. They understand something that most of us are missing. We know that relationships are hard, but we also know the blessing of being loved and loving other people. We know that being present to this life, to, to the blessings that God has given us, the food on the table, the beauty of creation, the, the feeling that we're connected to something bigger and beyond us is worth it. How am I doing on selling you and following Jesus? Meh, 50-50. Meh? <laughs> Jesus came to show us that after, after death comes life. And I know we'd all rather just have life and skip the death part. Pretty much everybody is on agreement about that. But sometimes living into the grace and generosity and love of God comes with a cost. But you know what else it comes with? God, right? We know that in the darkest of days, we are moving towards light. And perhaps, and probably more importantly, we know that in the darkest of days, God is with us. God is calling us into the light, reminding us that we are beloved, that we are worthy of a life lived to its fullest. And if you are in darkness right now, know that we are with you because we've been there and we understand that it costs something to live into the fullness of life. But we believe that it is worth the cost to follow Jesus. Please rise and join with me in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge living and the dead. 
and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your, for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray especially for Barbara, Bobby, Cece, David, Deanne, Doug, Ely, Emily, Frank, George, Jean, Julie, Kathleen, Margaret, Pat, Shane, Susan, Suzanne, and Wendell. Are there others? Oh so. Lord, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the next part of the prayers. <laughs> Are there birthday prayers? Anybody here celebrating a birthday next week? Aha. Okay. Jan, anybody online? Going once? Okay. Oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant Jan as she begins another year. Grant that she may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen her trust in your goodness all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. Blessings to you. Any anniversaries? Any Labor Day weekend weddings? It's not the worst idea. Ah, oh, there we go. All right, well, let's join, join me in praying for them. Oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and the church. Send therefore your blessing upon these, your servants, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessings to your family. 
At this time, I'd like to invite the daughters of the king forward. Forward, more forward. <laughs> yeah, how about you guys here and then, and then the, the whole gang can stand. Oh yeah, this is great. We didn't block this ahead of time, so. <laughs> All right, you ready? Oh, I have a microphone. This is for this moment. There you go. Okay. I can hold it for you. Okay. It is my privilege to present Mary Basil and Quinn Hollister as candidates for membership in the Order of the Daughters of the King. And it is also my privilege to present Joy with Joy. Williams as rededication in the order of the Daughters of the King. We are gathered here in the sight of God and before this congregation to admit these women into the order of the Daughters of the King. We commend them to your earnest prayers that they may have grace to fulfill the obligations of the order and that their labors may be to the glory of God and to the welfare of all his people. The Daughters of the King is an order for women whose mission is the extension of Christ's kingdom, especially among women and girls, through prayer, service, and evangelism. Do you desire to be a member of the Order of the Daughters of the King? I do. Do you promise to obey faithfully the two rules of the order, the rule of prayer and the rule of service, to offer your support to the clergy for the good of the parish and the extension of Christ's kingdom, to wear faithfully the cross of the order, and to work for its purposes, as God may give you the opportunity. I do God's help. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I receive you and admit you as members of the Order of the Daughters of the King. Will all of you support these women in their ministry of prayer and service? We Some crosses. Bless, O oh Lord, these crosses and grant to your servant now admitted into this order such an abundance of your grace that they may wear this sacred symbol in the spirit of humility and with devotion to the service of King of Kings. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Accept and wear faithfully. Right. Accept and wear faithfully the order, cross of the order, remembering the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, take up your cross and follow me. All right, this is your turn. You see where we are? Yep. Almighty God, help me to pray so faithfully that I may draw near to you and learn your will. Help me to serve so joyfully that others may be drawn to you. May your Holy Spirit guide me each day that all I think, do, or say may be pleasing in your sight. I ask it for the sake of him whose cross I wear, my King and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Give your blessings to our Lord, wherever it may be throughout the world. Grant that we, your daughters, have never may discern your truth and bear the cross through the battles of our earthly life. Give us strength to overcome temptation and the grace to work to spread your kingdom and to gather your scattered sheep in the fold. Pour out upon us the sevenfold gift of the Holy Spirit, that we may always remember it is your work we are called to do, that all we think, do, or say may be pleasing in your sight. We ask it all for his sake, our King and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
May your love, O Lord, help the daughters live lives of love. And may your holiness lead them to be examples of virtue, that they, strengthened by your Holy Spirit, may pray and serve you all their days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Uh, can we take a picture? Everyone look at them. <laughs> Pause, come together. A little bit closer, a little bit closer. And our chapter celebrates its 30? 34th anniversary this year. So can we get an applause for the Daughters of the King and their new members? The peace of Christ be always with you. And share signs of peace with one another. All right, ready or not, here it comes. We are going to start our program year back next Sunday with our welcome back celebration. At nine o'clock, we'll have Sunday school for our littler kids and our junior high youth group will have its first meeting with our new sixth graders. So that's exciting. Uh, and then our choir will be back as we begin our program year. So please join us for that celebration next Sunday. Uh, we also are going to have a Paris potluck and game night on the 16th, which is a Saturday. So you can bring your favorite game or a dish to share the hospitality committee is going to um, provide sandwiches makings. Um, they might be a little more exciting than that, but a uh, main dish. And so if you want to bring a side dish or a dessert, um, anything you want to share, that would be great. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the gastro martyrs, which is our um, supper club, as well as some other opportunities for social life and just have some social life, some time together. So please join us for that if you can. And then just save the date. First Sunday in October is our pet blessing. Bring your pet to church day. Uh, you can also bring your pet after church if it's not the kind of pet that likes to be in church. Uh, either one, we'll get our blessings as we celebrate St. Francis. What am I forgetting? Aha, the men's group. I'm not a man. You have to tell them about it. Uh, as usual, this Tuesday, the men's group is meeting at the Village Inn at Iliff and Chambers, 8.30. Uh, the other thing I want to say is that we have two openings out there on the, the uh, uh, Sunday's happy hour. Um, it's not called happy hour. <laughs> oh, coffee hour. <laughs> coffee hour. Uh, uh, it's, it's pretty happy. It's isn't pretty it? happy. It's pretty happy. <laughs> so, so if you... <laughs> So if you want to be one of the special people on those two places that are left, get out there early and sign up for it. Thank you. That's happy Harry, yes. Any other announcements for the good of the whole? Well, let us continue to be grateful for all the ways that God blesses us and share those blessings with God and with those in need.
I want to remind you that this is God's table and God makes a place for all people. So wherever you are on your journey, all are welcome here. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give them thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets and their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord, God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 
The disciples knew the Lord Jesus. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
Please join me in the prayer after communion. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. forth into the world to follow Jesus. Alleluia.
Thank you. 